of law of magic can be defined as first law of law, which is first principles before reasoning begins, and second is by rules of inference, which is direct to valid use of inferential reasoning. So, who created laws? It is Aristotle who created laws with three ways of laws. First, law of identity, second, law of non contradiction, and third is law of the student medium. So, why we use laws? It is important skills to use in all kinds of everyday situations in combinations with other cognitive skills. It helps make an important decisions, discover the truth, so come up with new ideas, and set achievable goals. So, how logic used in real life? It is used to explain the waters of everyday life, helps people to understand all the world around us, use this discuss, and use the actions we did in our daily lives. Besides, there have three more reasons to learn law of logic, which is first, knowing if the discussion is a valid, is a valuable skill. Only in the discussion and teaching yourself to find weaknesses is a skill that is useful not only in every life, but in almost every area. It helps keep us in the direction of true and only for life. The second reason is good logic is a powerful tool of persuasion, which is called victory. The art of persuasion is called victory and it includes almost all forms of persuasion except mercury, blackmail, or physical violence. And the last reason is logic helps us find errors and make us a better citizen. It also makes us be more critical reader, listener, and thinker. Suspicious persuasive methods can definitely be effective, but there's not a reason for preferring them over solid and candid discussions. On the contrary, this tendency to believe everything you heard is why reasoning is more important than ever. That's all for information of no authority. Thank you. Next, we will discuss about the content uh, in the topic, laws of logic, and there are 13 laws will be used to simplify an argument. So for the first law uh, is law of double negation, which is when a statement has double or two uh, not symbols, and it is equivalent to a st uh, the statement itself, which is, for example, here, not not P is equivalent to P. Next is De Morgan's law, when, uh, for example, not in bracket P or Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. The symbols here will change and the statement uh, will have the uh, not symbol in front of it. Next is commutative law. For example, P or Q is equivalent to Q or P. The statement uh, will cha change uh, the places, uh, which is here is P in front uh, and then it's equivalent to Q in front like this. The next one is associative law. For example, P or in bracket Q or R is equivalent to in bracket P or Q or R. Next is distributive law. Uh, for example, P or in bracket Q and R is equivalent to uh, in bracket P or Q and in bracket P or R. If you notice here, associative, uh, associative law will be used when the statement has the uh, same symbol in it and distributive law will be used when uh, there are different symbols uh, used in a statement. So for the next one is idempotent law when P, and, uh, P or P is equivalent to P uh, or P and P is equivalent to P. The next one is identity law when P or contradiction uh, is equivalent to P and P or uh, tautology is equivalent to P. The next one is inverse law. Uh, for example, P or not P is equivalent to uh, tautology uh, or P and not P is equivalent to uh, contradiction. The next one is domination law. For example, P uh, or T is equivalent to uh, T, is, uh, which is tautology, and P and F is equivalent to F, which is contradiction. And then next is absorption law. Uh, it will be used when uh, statement P or in bracket P and Q is equivalent to P, 
or P and in bracket P or Q is equivalent to P. Notice here the symbol uh, used is different. So uh, absorption law will be used. Next is definition of implication when uh, in bracket P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q. Next is contrapositive law. Uh, it will be used when uh, in bracket P implies Q is equivalent to uh, not Q implies to not P. This is the contra for, uh, contrapositive law. And the last one is biconditional identity law, which is it will be used when, uh, for example, uh, in bracket P, if and only if Q is uh, equivalent to in bracket P implies Q and Q implies P. So the laws that I explained just now, uh, we have to memorize and use it wisely to simplify the uh, to simplify an argument. Now we go through for the first example. The question asks to simplify in record P and not Q or Q. The first law that we can use is competitive law, so it will be Q or in record P and not Q. Then we use the distributive law, so the, the equation will be in record Q or P and in record Q or not Q. Next step, we can change Q or not Q become T by using inverse law. So now we have in bracket Q or P and T. Then we can use the identity law, so it will be Q or P. Hence, the final answer is Q or P. Next question is, show that not in bracket Q implies P, in bracket P and Q is equal to Q. So we have to prove that the Vincent equation is equal to Q. First, we use implication law, so the equation will be not in bracket not Q or P, and in bracket P and Q. Then, we can use the Morgan law, and the equation will be in bracket not not Q, and not P or in bracket P and Q. For not not Q, we use double negation law, so not not Q will be Q. And next, we use the commutative law, so the equation become in bracket Q and not P, or in bracket Q and P. Then we use the distributive law, so the equation will be Q and in bracket not P or P. We can use inverse law to change not P or P become T and last but not least, we use identity law and the final answer is Q. Okay, so for the question number 3, I take it from the past question, um, which is June 2019. Okay, let's continue with the question. Prove the proposition P if and only if not Q is logically equivalent not P and Q in a bracket or not Q and P in a bracket using the laws of logic. So first step, what we need to do is we need to um, take from the right hand side which is not P and Q in a bracket or not Q and P in a bracket also. So the first step, we need to use distributive laws. So it will become not P and Q in a bracket or not Q and we put the larger bracket and not P and Q in a bracket also or P and we also put the larger bracket. Next step, we still need to use the distributive laws um, and it becomes not P or not Q in a bracket and Q or not Q in a bracket also and we put the larger bracket and in a bracket not P or P and Q or P in a bracket and we also put the larger bracket. Alright, next we use inverse laws because Q or not Q is equivalent to T which means tautology and not P or P also is equivalent to T. That's why we use the inverse laws. So it will become not P or not Q in a bracket and T and we put the larger bracket and um, T and in a bracket Q or P and we also put the larger bracket. After that, we use the identity laws and it will become not P or not Q in a bracket and Q or P in a bracket. Okay. For the next step, we use um, the definition of implication. So it will become P implies not Q in a bracket and not Q implies P. Okay, so lastly, we can use biconditional identity laws and it will become P if and only if not Q. So it is proven that um, P if and only if not Q is logically equivalent to not P and Q in a bracket or not Q and P in a bracket. Alright, same goes to the question number 4. I also take it from the past equation, but this one is from March 2015. So the question is, simplify the following statement using the laws of logic. So the statement here is not in a larger um, bracket, not in a bracket, again, not P implies Q and R in a bracket, 
or not Q. So here we use seven steps, which the first step is we use De Morgan's law, and it becomes not not in a bracket not P implies Q, and R in a bracket and not not Q. Next we use the law of double negation, and it becomes not P implies Q in a bracket and R in a bracket again and Q. After that, we can use definition of implication, so it becomes not not P or Q in a bracket and R in a larger bracket and Q. So not not P, we can change it um, becomes P by using law of double negation, so it becomes P or Q in a bracket and R in a larger bracket and Q. Alright, um, since we can exchange um, from Q, to the front and R to the back. So we can use associative laws and it becomes P or Q in a bracket and Q in a larger bracket and R. After that, we use commutative laws. It becomes Q and in a bracket Q or P and then in a larger bracket and R. And lastly, we use the absorption laws and it becomes Q and R. So the last answer is Q and R. So from the introduction, the list of laws and the examples, we learn how to determine the truth value between two or even more statements. We learn how to take the structure or terminology or even the language of the statements and then we show whether such the statements can be true or not. So from that, we know how to establish the logical equivalent uh, from the laws of logic. This is because logical equivalence only occurs when two statements have the same true value. This means that uh, the first statement can be true in its own context and the second statement can also be true in its own context. They just both need to have the same meaning. Before we end this presentation, please know that uh, logic is important because it influences every decision we make in our lives. Uh, logical thinking allows us to learn and make decisions that will affect our lifestyle. If no one thought logically, we will all be running around like chickens with our heads cut off and nothing would make any sense. So that's all from us. We end it with thank you.